I was 18 years old when I got married. I belonged to a very conservative family, a Baloch family, where good daughters never say no to their parents. My father wanted me to get married. And all I said was, if that makes you happy, I will say yes. And of course, it was never a happy marriage. Just about after two years of getting married, about nine years ago, I met a car accident. Somehow my husband fell asleep and the car fell in the ditch. He managed to jump out, saved himself. I'm happy for him. But I stayed inside the car and I sustained a lot of injuries. The list is a bit long. Don't get scared. I'm perfectly fine now. Radius ulna of my right arm were fractured. The wrist was fractured. Shoulder bone and collar bone were fractured. My whole rib cage got fractured. And because of the rib cage injury, lungs and liver were badly injured. I couldn't breathe. I lost urinal bowel control. That's why I have to wear the bag wherever I go. But that injury that changed me and my life completely as a person and my perception towards living my life was the spine injury. Many people came to rescue. They gave me CPR. They dragged me out of the car. And while they were dragging me out, I got the complete transaction of my spinal cord. Those two and a half months in the hospital were dreadful. I will not make up stories just to inspire you. I was at the verge of despair. One day doctor came to me and he said, well, I heard that you wanted to be an artist, but you ended up being a housewife. I have a bad news for you. You won't be able to paint again because your wrist and your arm are so deformed, you won't be able to hold a pen again. And I stayed quiet. Next day doctor came to me and said, your spine injury is so bad. You won't be able to walk again. I took a deep breath and I said, it's all right. The very next day doctor came to me and said, because of your spine injury and the fixation that you have in your back, you won't be able to give birth to a child again. That day I was devastated. I still remember, I asked my mother, why me? And that is where I started to question my existence. That why am I even alive? My mother said to me, this too shall pass. God has a greater plan for you. I don't know what it is, but he surely has. And in all that distress and grief, somehow or the other, those words were so magical that they kept me going. I was trying to put that smile on my face all the time, was hiding it was so hard to hide the pain which was there but all I knew was that if I will give up my mother and my brothers will give up too I cannot see them crying with me so what kept me going was one day I asked my brothers I know I have a deformed hand but I'm tired of looking at these white walls in the hospital and wearing these white scrubs I'm getting tired of this. I want to add more colors to my life. I want to do something. Bring me some colors. Bring me some small canvas. I want to paint. So the very first painting I made was on my deathbed, where I painted for the very first time. It was not just an art piece or just my passion. It was my therapy. What an amazing therapy it was. Without uttering a single word, I could paint my heart out. I could share my story. People used to come and say, what lovely painting. So much color. Nobody could see the grief in it. Only I could. And that day I decided that I'm going to live life for myself. I am not going to be that perfect person for someone. I am just going to take this moment and I will make it perfect for myself. And you know how it all began? That day I decided that I'm going to fight my fears. We all have fears. Fear of unknown, fear of known, fear of losing people, fear of losing health, money. We want to excel in career, we want to become famous, we want to get money. We are scared all the time. So I wrote down one by one all those fears and I decided that I'm going to overcome these fears one at a time. 
You know what was my biggest fear? Divorce. I couldn't stand this word. I was trying to cling on to this person who didn't want me anymore, but I said, no, I have to make it work. But the day I decided that this is nothing but my fear, I liberated myself by setting him free. And I made myself emotionally so strong that the day I got the news that he is getting married, I sent him a text that I'm so happy for you and I wish you all the best. And he knows that I pray for him today. My biggest fear, number two, was I won't be able to be a mother again. And that was quite devastating for me. But then I realized there are so many children in the world, all they want is acceptance. So there is no point of crying, just go and adopt one. And that's what I did. I gave my name in different organizations, different orphanages, and I waited patiently. Two years later, I got this call from a very small city in Pakistan. I got a call and they said, are you Muniba Mazari? There is a baby boy and would you like to adopt? And when I say yes, I could literally feel the labor pain. I said, yes, yes, I am going to adopt him. I am coming to take him home. And that day, I was two years old, two days old, and today he's six. You know when you end up being on the wheelchair, what's the most painful thing? That's another fear that people on the wheelchair or the people who are differently abled have in their hearts but they never share. I'll share that with you. The lack of acceptance. People think that they will not be accepted by the people because we, in the world of perfect people, are imperfects. So I decided that instead of starting an NGO for disability awareness, which I know will not help anyone, I started to appear more in public. I started to paint. I always wanted to. I've done a lot of exhibitions. I'm Pakistan's first wheelchair-bound artist. I've done a lot of modeling campaigns, different campaigns for brands like Tony and Guy. I decided that I'm going to join the national TV of Pakistan as an anchor person. I became the national goodwill ambassador for UN Women Pakistan, and now I speak for the rights of women, children. We talk about inclusion, diversity, gender equality, which is a must. I was featured in BBC 100 Women for 2015. I'm one of the Forbes 30 under 30 for 2016. We have this amazing fantasy about life. This is how things should work. This is my plan. It should go as per my plan. If that doesn't happen, we give up. So my dear friends, let me tell you one thing. I never wanted to be on the wheelchair. Never thought of being on the wheelchair. I was always aspiring to do bigger things, but had no idea that for that I have to pay the price to be where I am today. It's a very heavy price. This life is a test and a trial, and tests are trials are never supposed to be easy. So when you are expecting ease from life, and life gives you lemons, then you make the lemonade, and then do not blame life for that, because you were expecting ease from a trial. Trials make you a stronger, better person. Life is a trial. And with time you realize that. It is okay to be scared. It is okay to cry. Everything is okay, but giving up should not be an option. They always say that failure is not an option. Failure should be an option because when you fail, you get up and then you fail and then you get up and that keeps you going. Embrace each and every breath that you are taking. Celebrate your life. Live it. Don't die before your death. Real happiness lies in gratitude. So be grateful, be alive, and live every moment. <laughs>